What is good everyone and welcome back to a brand new video today. We are here with a Q&A on the YouTube channel. We haven't done one of these in years. The vlogs have been popping off on my second channel, on my main channel. Appreciate you guys uh, for watching those. I'm gonna link my main or my second channel in the description so you guys can find that. You know I got that rocker on baby. You know you know I got that rocker. I'm always representing. Always representing rocker. We love rocker. But let's get started. Let's get started on these questions real quick. From Sammy, if you were a GM and had to build a team, who are you choosing with Money not being a problem. Ooh, this is an interesting one. So, I mean, I think I gotta go the Simp Abizi as a sub duo for sure. Need that. As a main AR, this is a tough one. You probably have to go sell him as a main AR. He was like a flex, but as the season went on and it progressed, like he used a main AR for the phase roster. And now we need a flex player. I don't know. Do you guys know any good flex players with good communication? veteran been around for a while clutch some impossible scenarios do you guys know any let me know in the comments if you guys know any ones but i'll probably go with that squad uh for sure from flex dex when do you think your prime was or do you think you're still in it now this is a good question um because in cod everyone's like yo your prime is from 19 to 22 and then your ass um but now nah, personally for me cod i've always said you can be pro as long as you want but you have to put the time in a lot of the times people have retired and focused on other things is because they're not focused on COD, improving as a player, improving as a team. They are starting families. They're focused on other stuff, other things they want to do in their career. So if you put the time and effort in, most of, most often than not, you're going to see good results. So I think I'm still in my prime now. I think I've been getting better and better uh, ever since like Black Ops 4. So excited for the next season to, to keep on improving. And I just really, I just love the process of getting better. Next question, Matrix season. What's your favorite thing about playing? My favorite thing about playing is traveling to different countries and different states, meeting tons of new people seeing new cultures everything and meeting supporters from all around the world and then uh, when people come up to you in real life and they're like yo I watch your streams I watch your YouTube videos and it's just like an amazing feeling so definitely those, those, that's my favorite thing about playing uh, Call of Duty professionally preach RG said what are some of the difficulties you have when it comes to letting teammates know about their performance scrims league matches or major events when is the right time to bring it up I think it means that like, your teammates aren't doing bad they're not doing good um, like talking to them about it. I mean, people know. People aren't stupid. Uh, they're not delusional. They're gonna know that they aren't playing well. You feel it. You see it. You, you if you're playing bad, you're getting roasted on Reddit and Twitter. Um, so you know. But I mean, like I'll just go to my teammate, like, hey, what's up? Like, what's going on? Everything okay? Like, everything is okay. Is everything okay outside the game? First of all, before like everything in your real life going well. And then we'll talk about that, and I'll be like, yo, like, what's what do you think is going wrong? Like, where do you feel uncomfortable? What map? What mode? What situation? And then we try and just watch over it and improve together. Like, they'll have some ideas. I'll have some ideas, and we'll just talk about it until we find well, like what we think can help. And uh, I love when teammates say that, and I love when I do bad at a map, and I go to someone, I'm like, yo. Um, can we watch this VOD together? Like, I, I, I feel like I'm, I could be doing something better here. We watch it together, I improve. So, it's really about just being able to learn and take that criticism. Logics asks, what did it feel like being so young when competing and did it affect your daily school life at all? Oh, definitely. I mean, I was staying up and playing until like 12 or 1 a.m. every night. I'd have to go to school at like 7 or 8 a.m. So I had to be up early. Yeah, it's uh, it, it was tough, but I would just be on the grind, honestly. And I would try and get my homework done in the class or uh, just hit someone else up like, yo, send me the homework real quick, send me the homework. But uh, make sure you get good grades in school, everyone. But I was just super busy. My friends would always text me on the weekends, yo, let's hang out. And I'd be like, ah, I can't, I'm sick, sorry. Like I can't hang out this weekend. And I would say that every weekend for 30 weekends straight. And then you'd be like, okay, well you're sick on the weekends, but you're fine Monday in school. So what's going on here? Uh, and then my friends and stuff and all my friends found out about my pro gaming career. And uh, you know, I couldn't hide it anymore. It was a good time though. Alex asks, what's your workout routine? I saw those big guns in the vlog. I can't, come on, come on, you know me, baby. In Minnesota, all there is to do is work out and play COD and watch VOD. So that's what I was doing. Uh, but yeah, I, have a, I use this app called the Strong App. It's really dope. Our trainer in Minnesota put us on. For example, today, like it's like some superset type stuff. Oh, it's super bright. You can't really see it, but it's like a superset. So I'll do bench press, bicep curl, battle rope circles, and crunches all in a superset three times. And then I'll go to incline bench press, bicep curl with cables, chest press. And then I'll do that superset three, or I'll do that four, four of those superset three times, chest fly, bicep curl, push up, rush and twist. So I do all that. Like we do four workouts in each superset and then three sets of those so yeah it's pretty good I, I enjoy the gym i just enjoy working out staying healthy keeps my mind clear keeps me feeling good keeps me uh focused in game and stuff so i love working out 
Eris asked, is MW2 4v4 or 5v5 next season? 4v4, I don't think 5v5 is ever coming back. I'm never gonna say never, but I just don't think it will ever happen. Enable tweeted me, who are we teaming with next year? Oh, okay, this is an interesting one. Who are we teaming with, Ian? Um, I don't know, Ian's like a, a more objective-based SMG, so he'll be like the entry man, the hill man, the rotating. He's uh, like the glue that you need on a team, so we need a superstar. Who's a superstar SMG on the market? Ooh, there's Hydra. There's Hydra, he's a real good one. There's Afro, Afro's really good as well. He, you know, we can get one of them. And we need like an AR. I could be a flex or a main. So we need a, a fl really good flex or a main. Um, let's see, maybe Slasher, maybe Cami, maybe uh, Skies, you know? There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there. So we'll, Ian, hit my line and we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this more in detail. Era asked, Honest thoughts of living in Minnesota. As a Minnesota native, I'm genuinely really curious. Okay, so let me break it down for you. Minnesota. I did not like living there during the winter because I like to go outside, get sunshine, run around, go crazy. Even if it's cold, I don't mind. If it's like 40 degrees, I don't mind that. But it's way too cold in Minnesota for like two or three months out of the year. It's like negative 15. You can't go outside. You don't see the sun for like five months, which I don't like. But uh, in the spring and summer, it's really, really nice. Like it's super nice. It doesn't really get too humid. It, it gets pretty hot sometimes, but... Growing up in California and also living in Texas, like I'm really used to heat, so like the Minnesota heat isn't bad at all to me. Uh, but no, it's beautiful in the spring and summer. But the winter, like I stay inside all day already. Like I don't want to stay inside all day, and then I can't even have an option of going outside. At least when I was living in New York, when it'd be like 20 or 30, I thought it was cold then, and I'd be like, oh, this is really cold. But then I went to Minnesota, and I was like, oh, damn. It gets negative 15 degrees, negative 20 degrees here. This is really cold. 20 degrees, 30 degrees, I'm like, oh my God, it's so warm now, I'm in shorts. But uh, no, Minnesota was a dope place. Um, I wish I went to the lakes while I was there, never got a chance, but I would love to do that. And uh, it, we were kind of in a secluded, isolated area, so that didn't help. Uh, we had no food places anywhere near us or anything near us for that, fact, for that matter. Um, but yeah, Minnesota's a dope place. Next question. Why, dog ass, are you staying with the Minnesota Rocker? The answer is yes. Okay, thank you, Dill. Then, I mean, you answered it for me. You know, Minnesota Rocker, once again. Minnesota Rocker, baby. But we're gonna have to see how Roster Mania goes. But hopefully, I love this organization, love the people, love the supporters. So, uh, we're, we're just gonna see how um, free agency, Roster Mania, it all plays out. But if I can, I would love to play for the Minnesota Rocker again. King Silencer said, what's it like still frying the league after a few years? I mean, it still feels good. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm having way more fun playing now than I did back then. Like back then, COD wasn't serious. Like you just went to events, you scrimmed, you traveled. It was fun, it had a good time. There wasn't coaches, there wasn't VOD review, there wasn't all the scientific breakdowns of every single player and team and preparing like crazy for these matches. And nowadays, you have to get it to the science. You have to get it to per, you have to get, yeah, as close to perfection as you can and that's what I personally like. like I love watching VOD I love trying to improve I love seeing what other players and teams are doing really well that I could take and implement into my team and my gameplay so I just love how serious it's getting now and uh, that's why I love Call of Duty honest opinion on Vanguard oh man you guys had to ask this one huh yeah I had to ask this one okay visions I will say I tweeted I tweet out before every game because I, I just I'm very optimistic that the next game will be the best Call of Duty of all time this is gonna be hard for me but I think I have to admit I was wrong. Call of Duty Vanguard is not the best Call of Duty of all time. I have to come out and tell you guys the truth. It's not the best Call of Duty of all time. It's probably like bottom two or three Call of Duties of all time. So clip it, tweet it, record it. But it's all good because MW2 is going to be the best game of all time next year. So it's going to be fun. Um, your CDL pal. Toughest moment as a CDL pro. Hmm, toughest moment as a CDL pro. What was our toughest moment? I'm mean, honestly surprised to be from this last season. This last season is really tough. Um, just like not being at that level we know we could be at and just not playing to our expectation and everyone's expectation. It really sucks to fall short like that. So I'd probably say this season uh, in Vanguard was definitely our, like my toughest season in the CDL for sure. Or when we had to drop Lamar accuracy last year in Coworkers, that's like, that's my best friend. So, but he kind of knew it was coming cause he was doing Ramadan. So he's fasting and all that type of stuff. And he, for that whole like month or so, Really wasn't performing up to expectations, so that was really tough. That's my boy, but I'm glad to see him win an event, uh, win an event this year, get third at champs, and uh, just keep being successful. BQ asks, "Who's in your Mount Rushmore of Call of Duty?" Right, well, this is gonna be this is a good one. My Mount Rushmore, you gotta have Krim up there, you gotta have Scump up there, you gotta have Clay up there. I feel like, and then who'd I put for the last one? There's so many good players. You could put Karma, you could put Formal, you could put Aches. 
It has to be one of those three. There's honestly an argument for all three, Karma, Formal, and Aches. Cause then I feel like you have to put Damon up there for sure. Pat, I don't know. You could switch out. Like those seven players, can, any, any four of them could be on the Mount Rushmore. So you could do that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, that's just a tough one to answer, honestly, cause they're all legends and did so much for the scene. Meds asks, favorite achievement to date? Doesn't have to be your best achievement, but something you're proud of and can be looked at and happy it happened. Favorite achievement, um, favorite achievement. The comeback versus, uh, the comeback. Actually, all my comebacks, honestly. That just goes, that's like a good sign. Like, a good sign that, like, I never give up. The people I surround myself with and my teams, they never give up either. Um, like, we've, I've done a best of three reverse sweep. I've done a best of five reverse sweep. I've done a best of seven reverse sweep. I've done a best of nine reverse sweep. I've had a legendary reverse sweep in my old phase team with me, Clayster, and Abel Zuma uh, versus Epsilon in losers finals to get the grand finals. Then we ended up doing two best of sevens versus Optic. That just shows like the grit of the team and everything. And then yeah, all of our other comebacks that we've had versus Optic and Gfinity or Toronto at the uh, Major and just all like the crazy reverse sweeps you've had. So that's just a really cool achievement to have. Thomas asked, which city is the best to travel to and play at what event and why? Mm, this is a good one. I do really like, I did really like competing in France or London. Those are really fun places to compete. The crowds are always nuts. They're always going crazy. Pretty good food. The only part is when we were in France one time and it was so hot so hot like 100 bajillion degrees they don't have ac out there like the ac is very very weak because they don't really stay inside like that so we were opening the mini fridges in our rooms to try and get some kind of cold air just any literally literally a drop of cold air um but yeah definitely overseas in london or in uh, france where it was really really dope what was the worst part of being a pro lucky justly probably just the, the sacrifice you have to make um, at the time, traveling. Like I've moved for the past four or five years. I've moved every single year, which is which gets tough. Moving is never easier. If you've moved from an apartment to college or from a house to another house with your family, whatever it is, moving is not easy. No matter how many times you do it, it does not get easier. So probably moving and uh, all the time you have to sacrifice. But you have to sacrifice time in anything you do if you wanna be the best in the world at it. So whether you could be uh, a Call of Duty player, you could be a football player, you could be a student, you still have to sacrifice and dedicate time to studying, getting good grades. So sacrifice isn't too bad because you gotta make sacrifices to get further in life. But probably the moving every single year, that does get old, it gets, it gets old. Aztec said, does sadness ever exist to you? See Mabby all the time. Yeah, no, I definitely get sad. Everyone gets sad. Um, but sometimes I'll just think like, why am I sad or mad or no? I'll think, I'll like, why am I like that? And I'll like figure out what is bothering me or sometimes there might even be anything bothering me. I might just be in a bad mood for no reason. And I'm like, all right, like I just gotta stop doing that. And uh, I just gotta find, you gotta find things that make you feel good, keep you happy, whether that's working out or reading books, going in nature, going to the beach, going to the lake, um, and playing a video game you enjoy, eating certain foods, foods you enjoy, but, um, Making sure you're staying healthy, mentally, physically as well. Very big thing, getting some sunlight, very important to do that. Classify my guy asked, uh, worst and best place in states you've lived in and why? So the best place I will say is Marina Del Rey in California. Beautiful place, right next to Venice Beach. So I would scrim, walk on the beach, go get food, and just chill on the beach. I'd be able to go to the beach like in the morning before scrims, come back scrim, go to the beach after. It was just awesome. It was so much fun. Uh, I just love the beach. It's a great place to be, so relaxing and, and just it's a survive. Like, I just love it. Um, especially when it gets hot. Especially when it gets hot, where you have to go in the water, they have to come back out, they have to go back in because you're so hot. The worst place I lived, um, I like living in New York, I like living in Texas, so honestly, the worst place I lived, Sorry, but it's gonna have to be Minnesota for sure. That's definitely the worst city I've lived in. It's just like a little town, secluded, isolated from everything. Winter was terrible. Uh, spring and summer are great, like I said earlier in the video, but we were just secluded so far away. There was nothing within the walking distance. If I walked for 30 miles any direction, or 30 minutes any direction, the only thing I'm seeing is some deer. So I'd have to go hunt for food. Um, but yeah, probably Minnesota is the worst one for sure. Good experience though, fantastic experience. You know, I'm always up for life experiences. Uh, but guys, that's gonna do it for the Q&A. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. And as always, my name is Attach and I'm out. Peace.